here we go. So we'll talk about the clinical and practical integration of NeoBiotech uh, NaviGuide. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar, but if you're not, then hopefully this will help you. This is my conflict of interest uh, disclosure statement. Obviously it's just a generic, but I have done consulting work with NeoBiotech and Hyos and um, Austin and some several other companies also. Uh, I've been a director and instructor for ADI, AIC, and GAO. Um, and mostly, uh, most importantly, particip participants must always be aware of the hazards of using limited knowledge in integrating new techniques or procedures into their practice. Only sound evidence-based dentistry should be used in patient therapy. Okay. And this is a, a little bit about me, um, who I am. For those of you who are new to seeing me, um, I was born in South Korea and emigrated with my family into the United States. Uh, we emigrated to San Francisco and uh, I went to UCLA undergrad and UCLA dental school and so forth. I've been married, I have three daughters, okay? And I'm a general practice, uh, I'm a practicing general dentist I've been practicing uh, for over 20 years, I've been uh, placing and restoring dental implants for 20 years. So uh, I've had failures and success and all the ups and downs. So I'm with you here with all the uh, uh, experiences. Okay. And this lecture, uh, I'm going to talk about how we're going to integrate um, NeoBiotech NaviGuide. Whenever we consider bringing new products into our dental practice, we always ask these simple questions. What, why, and how are we going to incorporate this product into our practice? This lecture hopefully will address these important questions to clarify why there is a, a paradigm shift in implant dentistry and why you should be going into um, guided surgery, okay? First of all, what is the question first, okay? What is obviously, like this uh, uh, screen is showing you, it's the computer guided surgical system by NeoBiotech. It's called the Neo Navi Guide. Okay. Um, and this is what the kit looks like. It might look kind of daunting for people who haven't seen this, um, but it's pretty straightforward. It's laid out really nicely and it's simplified. So I'm going to go through each uh, of these. Um, drills and what they're used for. Hopefully it's clear um, and I'll go fo forward with that. What will it do? It will provide doctors surgical confidence and you will achieve expert level outcomes immediately. Even for beginners, um, with this surgical guide, you're going to have expert level outcome. Okay. And Next thing, it's little to no pain to patient. And this is actually absolutely critical to helping you grow your practice, okay? And I think this is probably the top thing that really there is no pain, to, hardly no pain to the patient. It's gonna really grow your practice. And uh, I hope you get that, okay? And it's super fast surgery compared to freehand, you're gonna be able to place a single implant in about five to 10 minutes once you get used to this, okay? It really goes fast. So if you're doing multiple implants, that's where you're gonna really see the benefit because uh, you'll be confident of the angle, position, and depth. So your surgeries are gonna go super fast, okay? We will increase production and profit profitability. Obviously, we are looking at the bottom line to make profit for what we do. And this is where you're going to see a huge difference in your practice. Why do we do it? Okay. In the US, um, USA, only 10 to 15% of general dentists place dental implants. That's kind of a shocking uh, statement here, but it's true. And we, under, when we often ask why that is. When the rest of the world is uh, about 80% of general dentists placing implants generally, okay? And it's because dentists in the U.S. are really scared of surgical failures. 
as you see here, these are just few. Um, uh, on the upper left, you see the anterior. That's a huge failure, obviously, right? Nobody's going to want that. Uh, if you have that kind of situation, you're not helping your practice at all. And then you look at the other radiographs and you see the implants. And if you look at all of these, the major thing is that it's positional error, okay? All of these are positional failures in implant when you're placing the implant. All the doctors who placed these had good intention, but um, you know, the drills go a certain way when you're holding onto it with your hand. And so with surgical guide, these will hardly ever happen, almost zero, okay? You're gonna predetermine. And I put this draw uh, a comparison between a, a Tesla and a surgical guide. And that's actually my car. That's the same car that I have. And I didn't realize how good this technology is until you try drive it or use it. And um, that's the thing I wanted to uh, kind of bring across here. Unless you try it, you don't know, okay? And the thing that I found with uh, Tesla, if you're not familiar with it, it has the most advanced technology, okay, in terms of automobile. And with the uh, Neobiotech, this surgical guide is the most advanced technology in its category. The Tesla will navigate on autopilot. So, you know, when I'm driving on the freeway, I just put it on autopilot and the car drives itself. I don't have to worry about anything. In the guided system, that's practically what happens when you're doing surgery. It's guiding your, uh, your surgery. So you really don't have to stress. You just sit back and do it, okay? There's also automatic stopping. The car will stop before in general. I've heard some cases where it didn't work, but I think that's a minor case. There's always an explanation. But I've also experienced this where a car slammed on their brake in front of me and the car, my car automatically stopped. Okay. It was kind of nerve wracking, but it did its job. And in the surgical guide, it has a built-in stop. You can't go deeper than what we design if you use it correctly. That means if you're getting close to the nerve or vital structures, it will stop, okay? And then on the left, uh, the car, the way that the tire and everything is designed, it reduces noise and vibration. It's a very comfortable uh, ride. And on the right, the surgical guide, it re reduces handshaking. When you're doing the drilling, you're gonna go very smooth. It's not gonna shake so much. It's very smooth, okay? And then on the left, the car, phenomenal comfort, okay? It's just smooth and comfortable. On the right, the surgical guide, phenomenal accuracy. Once you start doing this and you see the final outcome, you'll be blown away by the accuracy and you could confidently show the patient how perfect it is. And yeah, it's very accurate, okay? And then the uh, Tesla, it's mind blowing speed. It goes from zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds, I think. I've tried that, it, it, it makes you dizzy to how fast it goes. And on the right, the surgical guide, it goes really fast, fast also, mind blowing speed and that category also. So if you're used to doing implants, especially for beginners, I know that a lot of beginners, I help out a lot of beginners on implants, and they're taking an hour uh, for uh, one implant or something. And you're going to find out with the beginners, I have helped beginners with surgical guide, and they'll be done in 15 minutes, okay? And they get, they are very, very, uh, um, excited and blown away about how fast it goes, okay? And on the left, the car, it's the now and the future. If you know the trend in automobile, everything's going electric, okay? And autom automated driving and so forth. So on the right, in dentistry, that's what's happening. You're seeing that the surgeries are going to surgical guide because the ease, comfort, and assurance, okay? and you really need to get on this and do surgical guides. Well, how do you do it? 
So I want to just start off with a, a simple case that we did, I did. And this was just recently, as you can see on the screen, I did this, uh, the patient came in on September 8th, and this is a fully guided single immediate implant and early load, okay? So I'll go through the case really quick and describe what's happening. Here, the patient uh, came in on September 8th, and you could see on the lower left, the patient had a primary um, molar there, residual primary molar. And if you could see on the panoramic x-ray, the distal root is broken. And this is a, a, a female medical doctor. Uh, her hus husband is my patient and she was going to another office, but she was uh, convinced to come to me by her husband. And this is how she presented. If you look at the uh, bite wing here, you could see the distal root of the primary molar on the lower is broken and she needs that out. There's no way we could save this, okay? And then um, this is another view. And this is an intro oral um, photograph. You could see there the tooth and you could see the tooth there. And this is a, a CBCT and you could see that the primary tooth doesn't have much of a of root, but fortunately, because of that, there's plenty of residual bone underneath, okay? You have plenty of bone. Um, it's almost like a patient presented with a uh, uh, remodeled bone, uh, uh, extraction socket. I mean, you have plenty of bone there. So we decided to do a surgical guide, obviously. So we took impressions of the CT to the lab. This is a, uh, another cross-section of the area, the CT cross-section here, and we have plenty of bone, like I said. So we send the images and the uh, impression to the lab, and this is the surgical guide that they are sending. They, they first say this is a position, and we look at the depth and the position, angulation and so forth, and we agree. I, I confirm that this is what I want. Um, it's far away from the nerve and yeah, there's, it's really straightforward. So I decided to do uh, immediate extraction and implant. So this is the, on the 15th is a week later is when the patient came to the office for the actual surgery. So this is right before the surgery, we uh, took a photo and patient actually didn't like the amalgam on the tooth in front of it, the premolar. And we could see that she had a, a decay going on there. So we're gonna change that also, take care of that also. So we took the um, tooth out, we don't make any flap. Um, and in fact, uh, you could see that the distal root here broke. That's a dark area on the bottom there. That, that is one of the root that broke off. Um, and I don't know if it's clear there, but that's... Now this image shows that root taken out. I just took it out with a root tip pick. Now it's a clean uh, extraction site. So we try on the surgical guide and here what we're looking at is the verification window, you could see right there, uh, right around the uh, incisor there. And what you do is take an explorer and try to put it in there at the incisal edge. And the end of the explorer is about 100 microns, okay? So if you could get an explorer completely in there, then you're, you're not that accurate. We wanted to be able to just see that that's uh, a tight fit. So you, you have to have three verification uh, windows. And that is because two, two spots will uh, determine a line. So within the two spot, you're going to have rotation. But if you have three in an arch, it uh, uh, creates a plane. And if you can verify in three different spots um, and it's an arch, then you know it's a plane and it's stable. So after we verify, we go in and we do, first thing we do is use a bone flattening drill. Um, I will go over all of these 
more in detail sequential, but I'm just giving you a clinical uh, example first. So I go in with a, a bone flattening drill and I flatten the ridge. Okay. After that, I go in with the point drill. And this is the one that you're going to initiate. And we go in. And this is a photograph showing after the point drill. You see right there in the septum, um, an osteotomy, osteotomy started. Okay. And it might look like it's off center a little bit, but it's because of the angle of the photograph. Uh, it's pretty center. It's exactly where we had planned on um, doing the implant osteotomy. And so after I use the point drill, I take off the guide and just check to make sure everything looks good. And you're gonna irrigate, rinse out in there, okay? And then after that, you go in with the 2.2 guide drill. Um, this is the initial drill and you go in and you're gonna go in at a, a medium speed, anywhere from 200 to 500 RPM, okay? And you're not gonna use irrigation because irrigation is really not gonna get into that surgical site because um, it's a closed surgical site, okay? After, this is a photograph showing after the 2.2 initial drill, you see the osteotomy getting a little bit bigger, okay? And then after a 3.0 diameter guide drill, and what I'm not showing you is I'm irrigating with uh, saline, um, chilled saline uh, in between every drill, okay? Uh, here is what I do to irrigate the area to keep it cool. The main thing that you have to focus on is keeping the bone cool, okay? So I recommend using um, chilled solution, irrigation solution like uh, saline or um, water, but chilled in the refrigerator, okay? And then I'm putting in the uh, fixture. I put the fixture mount and I put in the fixture here to the depth that I want. And then here, what you're seeing is that notch on the mount drive matches the notch on the guide. What that notch represents is the location of the hex face on the implant, okay, internal hex face. So I always try to make the uh, hex face flat part to the buckle of the of ridge, okay. That will give more, um, width or strength on the buccal side, buccal and lingual side of the implant. Okay. And so here I put the implant in and I always put the implant subcrestal slightly, 0.5 to one millimeter, okay. I like to err on uh, deeper than above. So this is exactly what I wanted. It's right in the center. So, I put in the cover screw and now I'm gonna work on the composite. So here I just removed some the amalgam and we noticed that she had decay. So we went ahead and um, chased the decay, cleaned up, uh, removed the decay. You can see here the cover screw is in place um, to protect the internal hex of the implant or any debris getting into the internal well of the implant, okay? Now I, I finished the composite here and now I'm ready to take the impression, okay? Again, this is an immediate extraction, immediate placement. Now I'm gonna do an immediate impression. So for those of you who are familiar with a pick cap system by Neobiotech, it's a great system, it's very simple. This is a, a narrower uh, um, impression cap, so I put it in. And you have to make sure that there's a vertical clearance between the pick cap cap and the posing, which I did. And I took an impression. Now, after taking the impression, I put a, a healing abutment. And this is the final x-ray after the surgery, okay? 
you could see the position is exactly where we planned on putting it. And it looks good. I have it subcrustal. Everything looks good, ideal. This is one week later. So we did the surgery on the 15th. This is the 22nd. So seven days later, she came back. And you could see some plaque around the uh, healing abutment, but that's fine. You could see the tissue healing beautifully. There's no inflammation. Everything's looking good. We took the healing cuff, healing abutment off. You could see the tissue is healing very well. Um, it's still in the healing phase, but looking good. Okay. Now I try in the final restoration. This is a full zirconia uh, implant crown. And I try it in and I check for occlusion. Here you could see that it's marking. I want it to be slightly hypo occluding meaning it's gonna, because the adjacent teeth are natural teeth, they have PDL. So when the patient bites down hard, those teeth are gonna go down a little bit. So you want the implant, which doesn't have a PDL, to be hypo contact. You wanna be a little bit less, okay? So I'm checking and uh, adjusting, and you can see that it's not contacting, the other teeth are contacting much heavier. Now I take, remove it and I'm polishing this, okay? I polish it and while I'm polishing, I have the uh, healing abutment back. And then now I'm putting in the final restoration here and I torque it down to, oops, sorry, let me go back. Torque it down to, I torque it down to 35 newtons per centimeter. This is showing 30, but I do about 30, uh, 35, anywhere from 30 to 40, but I try to go around 30, okay? And then uh, I put Teflon in the access hole to protect the abutment screw. And Teflon is in place. Put composite to fill the access hole. Check the bite and polish. And this is the final side view. So you could see on the uh, uh, right is the week before and the left is final restoration and one week later, including the implant, okay? And look at the tissue, it looks healthy, okay? And so you see on the left, uh, a week before, at the date of the surgery, on the right, you see one week later, final prosthesis delivered and it, this is a, a bite wing x-ray. And this is a, a PA, and this is the CT, okay? Everything looks good. And then this is what it's gonna do for you. This, I don't know if you're familiar with Yelp, but in uh, US, this is a, a rating that people do. This is what she wrote. Um, I didn't ask her, she just did it. And I, it says, incredible experience with Dr. Kent Juan. Five out of five bedside manner. He hears you and addresses your concerns 100%. Five out of five, ability to control patients' fear and pain. I felt zero pain, she says. Is this possible with an implant procedure? Five out of five, his work. He is a master at what he does. He is gifted with an artistic eye and extremely skillful hands. Result, perfect implant. I'm not trying to show you to boast, but I'm telling you what's gonna happen if you start implementing surgical guides into your practice. People are gonna say you're an expert, okay? Everything's gonna go perfect, so you're a master at what you do and so forth. Even with little or no experience in implants, you could get this kind of result. So this is how your practice is gonna grow, okay? So I'm gonna introduce, the, describe the guide system a little bit more in detail. And now we, we don't have that much time, so. I'm sorry if it's kind of brief. I usually take much more time to describe each one in detail, but I'm gonna to have to rush through. So let's break it down. The first step is to use a tissue punch after you put in a surgical guide. And that's, we don't make a flap uh, unless you're doing a bone graft and so forth. But uh, most cases, you're not gonna to need to do a, a, a flap. You just use a tissue punch and then you're gonna use that at 200 to 500 RPMs, okay? 
And this is used to remove soft tissue on the crust. This is a photo showing you that soft tissue goes into there. And on the left here, the orange arrow is pointing to the vent where the tissue, excess tissue can come out, okay? And on the tip is a serrated tip that's gonna uh, cut the uh, soft tissue. And then next uh, drill you're gonna use is a bone flattening drill, okay? Bone trimmer, and it's right there. There's three different ones, and the three different ones are for offsets. And therefore, uh, if you have teeth that are adjacent to the surgical site, you might have to use a longer offset. There's three different offsets. Zero offset, which is typically nine millimeter, okay? And then offset of 1.5 millimeter, you're gonna go uh, uh, increase the depth of 1.5 millimeter, so that's now 10.5 millimeter cutting depth, okay? And then uh, offset three millimeter, you're gonna go th uh, 12 millimeter, okay? And on this, what it does is it creates a three millimeter kind of uh, uh, concave ridge where you're gonna do implant. So after you the use the bone trimmer, you're gonna use a point drill. That's there. And I feel this is the most important drill. It's the initial, it creates initial path of drilling, okay? And the tip is sharp so it doesn't slip and safety design into it with a natural stop. So right there where the orange uh, or red, depending on your screen, arrow is pointing to, there's a natural stop. You can't go in any deeper than that. And if you look at the cutting length, it's 5.7 millimeter. So you're not gonna be going deeper than 5.7 millimeter. And the line markings on there, uh, the first line is nine millimeter offset. The way the Neobiotech uh, um, surgical guide is set up is that from the top of the bony ridge, to the top of the guide cylinder is nine millimeter offset. That's the, uh, the standard. If you decide to go a little bit deeper, 1.5 millimeter, you can do that also. But the standard is nine millimeter offset from the surgical guide platform to the ridge of the bone, okay? So the most important thing is you need to have the guide cylinder, which is that round, metal part, uh, the, the thick metal part, me, engage the guide sleeve, the green part um, that you're seeing there that's embedded in the surgical guide before the, the drill touches the bone. Since the offset is nine millimeter and the drill is 5.7 millimeter, when you put it in, the 5.7 millimeter goes in and before that touches the bone, the guide cylinder is gonna engage the guide sleeve. So it's gonna be guiding the point where you start, okay? And then after each uh, drill, like I said, you're gonna irrigate. You, we use a monojack syringe. Um, we just put saline, irrigation solution, chilled, and you just shoot it in there. I use a full syringe between each one. Once again, you're gonna use chilled irrigation solution solution. The important thing is keeping the uh, surgical site cool. Okay? So how irrigation helps prevent heat necrosis. It cools the surgical site inside the osteotomy. Use saline or sterile water, it doesn't really matter. Uh, refrigerate the solution until use. We keep a bag of uh, saline or sterile water in our refrigerator, not in the freezer, in the refrigerator until we're ready for the uh, surgery. Then we'll get a bottle and put, pour it into a cup and use that. Flushes out debris to prevent clogging in the uh, surgical site, lubricates the bone against drill, okay? Once again, chilled irrigation solution. Then the next drills are the guide drills, okay? And that's the whole section right there, that circle. And the first drill that you're gonna use is a 2.2 millimeter guide drill, also known as the initial guide drill. And once again, the guide cylinder is nine millimeters and then the cutting length is whatever the length is here. Uh, if you look at the shank of this uh, drill, you see marking 2.2 diameter by 7.3. So 
So the 7.3 is the cutting length, okay? After the initial drill, you have these different uh, guide drills and they're color coded. So for the 3.5 millimeter implant, diameter implant, you're gonna use a 3.0 diameter um, final guide drill, okay? The way that the Neobiotech implant system is made, there is a 0.5 millimeter, it's actually 0.6, but 0.5 millimeter uh, differential between the actual implant uh, and the drills that we use for the final, okay? So this is the uh, guide drills. And what we do in terms of sequence is we go from we widen the osteotomy first. So we're gonna go across this way. We don't go down, we go from 2.2 uh, and you use a 7.3 millimeter length and go to the right to the final diameter that you want before you're increasing the length. And the, the thinking behind that is keeping the osteotomy cool by opening the osteotomy, making it wide and putting irrigating between each drill, you're gonna see, you're gonna keep that area cool, okay? Then you're gonna uh, deepen the osteotomy going down, okay? So you're gonna use irrigation between every drill to keep the uh, site cool. And that's pretty much it for the osteotomy. And then you have the cortical tap, okay, down there for the different diameters, okay? You have uh, for the final diameter, for fixtures, four, four millimeter, 4.5 and five millimeter diameter fixtures, you have tabs, okay? Um, you definitely should use it on the mandibular arch, but I say go ahead and use it on maxillary and mandibular, okay? Unless you really have a soft bone on the maxilla, then you don't need to do a a tap, okay. And then you have the, to use, to place the implant, you're gonna use fixture mounts, which are uh, uh, circled here. And there's four different kinds of mounts here. There's a stop mount, offset mount, driver mount, hand, hand piece mount. And basically they're gonna deliver the fixture into the osteotomy. Um, the stop mount, that is set at nine millimeter offset. So you could use that, but really I don't use that at all. Um, my favorite one is the offset mount, okay? And uh, the reason why is I could put the offset mount on the fixture and then it's now engaged. It doesn't come apart unless you want to take it apart. And that way you have accurate, uh, uh, control of the depth of the implant insertion into the osteotomy, okay? So my favorite is the offset mount. The driver mount, it, you could use that, but there's a slight chance if you're a little bit off and you're using the uh, driver mount, the implant can go in a little bit deeper than you expect it. It could come in and undone hardly ever happens, but that is a potential, okay? And then you have the anchors, okay? And there's two different kinds of anchors. You have the uh, bone anchor and the in-fixture anchor. Bone anchors are used to anchor the surgical guide, stabilize the surgical guide um, by putting the anchor into the bone. And this, these are for, uh, like a full mouth case or a distal free end case, okay? And to use the bone anchor, you're gonna to have to use a ratchet connector. And when you use a ratchet connector after you put in the bone anchor into the uh, surgical guide, when you turn it, the fins there open up. So it grabs the surgical guide, surgical sleeve by opening up the fins. Same thing on the in fixture anchor, you're gonna put that in the fixture and use a hex driver and the fins open up and stabilizes the guide, okay? So I'm gonna describe uh, one more surgical uh, case 
I know I went through this really fast uh, because we're limited on time. I just wanted to show you and to get your interest in here and then show you what can, what can be done. Hopefully you'll be interested. This is a case that I did um, a couple of years ago, uh, February 28th, 2018. And once again, this is a fully guided single implant early load. Okay. So you see this is an upper right and you have a, a tooth is out and plenty of bone. So look at the CT here, there's plenty of bone there. Okay, and this is an intraoral uh, photograph at the time of surgery. Another view, an occlusal view, well, plenty of ridge, nice tissue. This is a surgical guide. Okay, checking to see the fit. This is a verification window. It's fitting nice. You can see close up, there's no uh, gap. I check with the end of the Explorer. Like I said, the end of this 100 micron, it's not going in, so we know it's a nice fit, okay? We checked everywhere and checked three points. And now we're gonna go ahead and use a tissue punch. After the tissue punch, you can see there's a hole there. And some people worry about the jagged edge of the tissue and how that might interfere with the implant. And I found no problem with that. It cleans out, okay? So I skipped all the, uh, I skipped all the photographs for the, each step. Now the implant is going in. An implant is in, it's showing you how that looks. Uh, it's right in the center. Uh, position's very good. This is how it looks. It's very clean surgery. You can see that there's really no bleeding, right? And the great thing is the bone is getting blood supply from the tissue that's intact still, okay? So the healing is very fast. And this is a side view here. And this is uh, uh, after, immediately after the implant is placed. You can see the position is exactly where we planned. It's nice. Now I'm gonna use a pick cap system again, take an impression. So I have the pick cap abutment in there. Uh, this is a clues of view. Put the pick cap on and check to make sure the vertical clearance is there. Take impression and the impression captures the pick cap plastic component and holds it in the impression. You send the pick cap components, uh, the, Healing abutment is here, it's the same day, right? This is right at the time of surgery. And this is one week uh, later, okay? Final prosthesis in there, March uh, uh, 2018. This is the final prosthesis right after the delivery. And more views. And that was April 14th, 2018. Okay, you could see, and it's immediate, pretty much immediate load. Uh, didn't say it's immediate load because we did wait about a week to get that prosthesis in there to actually load it. So I say it's early load, but it's almost immediate, okay. And this is October 31st. This is this past Saturday. Uh, I was able to take the x-ray and show you what happened between two years ago, two and a half years ago, right, almost, March 14, 2018, when we first put it in. And on the right, you see uh, just a few days ago on Saturday here, uh, um, US time, uh, Saturday. So two and a half years later, the implant looks exactly the same. The bone height is exactly the same. Everything's looking perfect, right? It was immediate load, used it right away, uh, no problem. Okay, um, I kind of made it short so that I could answer some questions. Uh, thank you. And that last patient was me. So here you could see 
I'm doing the implant surgery on myself. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you could. I'm looking in the mirror uh -oh. and mm -hmm. this is a tissue punch going in. That's a tissue punch. And then you can see, that's how I did it, using a mirror. And I'm going in, it's a very slow procedure. And then here I'm putting in the fixture. I'm torquing it down. to the depth that I want. And you can see that I'm getting great torque. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, that was it. I wanted to end it kind of, I, I was planning to end it at 8.45. I'm ending at 8.44 to give us like 15 minutes to answer any questions and so forth. Okay. Okay, um, uh, thank you for the lecture, Dr. Kent Wong. Uh, we got uh, two questions uh, on the chat box. Uh, okay. I think you can see that. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Jaweed. Yes, I see it from uh, Ahmed uh, Jaweed. Uh, please let us know, Maxim, how much is torque range from IS3 fixture? So for the fixture immediate load, I like to go for uh, 30 to the end is 50, okay? Anywhere from 30 to 50 is the maximum torque, the range that I like for immediate load, okay? Or early load. Um, with that kind of load, uh, I've had very good success. And the caveat to that is that 35 or 50 Newtons, it also depends on how much bone you have. If you have 30 to 35 Newtons and all your uh, um, forces are on the apex, then you shouldn't load it. It should be full body uh, uh, contact, okay? So for immediate load, there's some qualifications that you need, but the final torque I'd like is between 30 to 50, okay? And then uh, the other question that I see is, uh, if we were saying surfaces SLA, so could we load after four to five weeks if all other parameters are okay, like bone volume, tissue, and implant size, mount, and area, and arch according to occlusion? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, that's, I, that's what I agree. And you could do it even faster. So I showed you two cases where I did immediate load and they're both successful. And believe it or not, my office, the trend is going toward early loading. We're loading implants within the first month in a lot of cases now, but that's not everything. We, in our, uh, our office, uh, we're known for doing a lot of implants in our office complicated ones. So we do a lot of immediate extraction, immediate uh, implantation. Um, and then if we have the right case, then we do immediate load. So if it's patients that for a couple of the things that I look for for immediate load is where is that implant going in? If it's a, a, a second molar, okay, I don't immediate load usually a second molar, especially if that's the last tooth in the arch. Because our arch, our uh, um, teeth, the most posterior teeth is gonna get the most force, okay? So if you looked at my case, I placed immediate load on those T implants because distal to the implant, there's natural teeth, okay? If there's healthy natural teeth behind and in front, which I had, that helps a lot. And I, I mentioned that we do hypo-occlusion, slightly hypo-occlusion. 
and that helps to alleviate uh, undue stress. So I immediately load even on the same day if I pre-made the uh, crown and we've had a uh, very high success rate on all those immediate loads or early loading, over 95% success rate on the cases that we've done, okay? Um, what is the longest and biggest diameter fixture we can place using this guide searchable kit? The longest you could place is a 13 millimeter implant because that's the uh, length that Neobiotech has is a 13 millimeter. And the widest uh, uh, diameter is 5.0, uh, 5.0 millimeter diameter implant for the surgical kit that we have, okay? So do I always use, you know, the 13 millimeter I hardly ever use. Um, I find that my go-to uh, length is 10 millimeter. I don't even mind going to 8.5 or 7.3 millimeter implants. Uh, the more important thing is a diameter and the bone around the implant. We would like at least one millimeter around the circumference of the implant. So most importantly, buccal lingually, okay? Facial and palatal. Um, you want one millimeter buccal and lingual to the implant. Uh, that's very important, okay? And the length, the longer the length, you have more stability, uh, but I find that 8.5 is fine, but all my, most of my implants are 10 millimeter implants, okay? Um, so yeah, but the, with the surgical kit, the longest that you could put in is 13 millimeters. But in the posterior, that's gonna be difficult because the range of opening for the patient, the further back you go into the posterior of the mouth, with the surgical guide and handpiece and the drills, it's hard to have the patient open wide enough to get a, a drill that long, okay? You'd have to do a few tricks to do that if you need to do that, but I don't find that that's necessary. The 13 millimeter, you would only probably use it in the anterior, okay? Um, maybe canine region is probably where I would use a 13 millimeter if I needed to, but I find that even in the canine area, uh, 10 millimeter is sufficient. Okay, um, is there any other question? Uh, if any question more, please uh, use chat box or Q&A box, uh, if not, yeah, we're gonna close this webinar, All right? Okay, uh, let me do some screen share shortly. Oh, wait, I see one more question. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. It says uh, from Eugene Tan, if implant is placed subcrestal with tissue punch remove excess bone? Oh, no. So uh, that's a great question. So I place implants of and, and regularly get bone overgrowth, okay? And tissue punch will not get rid of all the uh, excess bone in most cases. So when you do that, you have to use a profile drill. In the surgical kit, uh, the guide kit, there's a bone profiler, okay? And you could use that to open up the uh, uh, bone. So that's what you would need to use. Um, I hope that answers your question. No more questions? Okay. okay.